I'm Maury Mann. This is uh, Cumberland Valley Wood Turners, and we're turning uh, angels tonight uh, that look like this. It's a, if, you, if it looks a little tough, it's how many of you have ever turned a handle? How many of you have turned a bowl? This is a handle and a bowl put together. All right? The directions in the 2004 article by Nick Cook are good, but not not complete. What I'm using is ash uh, tonight. These are baseball bats, blanks, that I got out of Warren County a long time ago, and I've got a whole bunch of them. But, so I made them out of ash. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do it. There's an echo. Yeah. All right. Echo's gone. Yeah, so. oh. Anyway, so we're going to you right. So, anyways, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put it on and turn between centers. Everybody knows how to do that. You got a live center and dead center, and we're going to turn it. Now, some of this takes some time to do, and so we're going to simulate some of this to save some steps and some uh, some time. But the one of the first things we need to do is to put a tenon on the end of this once it's round. But the tenon needs to be a dovetail tenant because you got this long wobbly thing that we're going to turn around and put in a chuck. So the way that I do the tenon is that I, I cut it down a little bit with my uh, parting tool and then I use a skew to get it to indent. You know, everybody know what a dovetail tenon is? Okay. A regular flat tenon won't hold very well when you're doing something this long because it's just going to be held on one, one end. So we turn that. Oh. So we turn that, and then we just go in here and make sure that it's, that it's got a good tenon on it. Then we take that off. We put our chuck on. We put this back on, and I've got a dovetail jaws here, so it'll clamp onto it. And we're going to be taking stuff on and off our lathe a long time. Now, what we need to do now is to put a recess in the bottom of it, okay? Because we're going to have to use that later on. So we've got a, and that recess needs to be a dovetail recess also. So I'm going to use carbide tools tonight. I still love my regular tools and I love sharpening them because I know how to do that. It took me years to learn how to do it. But for demonstration purposes tonight, I decided to do this. Carbides come in square, round, and pointed. So what we do is we take our square one, yeah, that's the one that's on the bottom of it, and we and we go in here with this, and we do our we are in our recess, and then we go back again to our skew, and go back in here and make that a dovetail and recess in the bottom. So that's because we're going to need that later on. Now, this is our angel's body. Nice body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line here about an inch and a half down from the top of the tenant. You all following along? As soon as there's a question, jump up. Okay. So this is and I always turn all all sides of those because it sometimes that doesn't uh, get done. Now we go back in here with our parting tool. And if you'll excuse me, but I always wear this no matter what.
So what's, what am I doing? What's it say in the book? <laughs> oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to take this down to be about an inch because our head is going to be about an inch. Humans, our heads, whether they're big or small, tall or short, our heads are all about the same. So no matter how tall we make our angel, we're going to make our head to be about an inch to do that. So now we're going to have to, uh, we're going to make our, we're going to make our body. I like to do that in like this. Make some steps here. Because that gives, begins to give me an idea of what my thing is. Now you know when you're using the carbides, it needs to be your your thing needs to be just a hair above center. Your hair needs to be a hair above center, so that it's down at an angle like this, because it is a scraper. speed I do, I do everything at 2,000 RPMs. It doesn't make any difference what I'm doing, whether I'm sanding, cutting, whatever. I do everything at 2,000 RPM. I used to have a variable speed that I would move around, but... What? That, well, that... Yeah. into a cylinder but one of the things you can't do is take too much off the bottom here or you're going to have to redo your dovetail your recessed dovetail now so that's fairly smooth let me get a little bit more these do a good job if you go slow and steady Now, just to go show Joe that I really listened to what he, what he said, I do, at this point, I do the, uh, the wax. This is a, um, a wax that has, it's a sanding paste, sanding paste that has diatomaceous uh, earth in it. It has um, beeswax and uh, a little olive oil, uh, mineral oil. And I've used this and it just does a fantastic uh, job. And what you do is you just put it on like this. I'm not gonna sand tonight because we really don't sand during these demonstrations. But uh, that's all it is. And then when you sand, it just drops off. This drops off, put a little bit more on, dropped off. I've not had any trouble. I've done lacquer on top of, after using this, I've done paint, I've done shellac, uh, because I use a little mineral oil after doing this or before I put my cover, my uh, thing on, and, uh, and it, 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 it doesn't hurt anything. Now, so we got a body. Not a great body, but it's a body. Now, we had to have put that dovetail on there, didn't we?
just for safety purposes, I do this sometimes. Now, we're going to take this down and uh, you got your key sticking in. keep me straight. starting to fly already. <laughs> well, you know what the, what we're going to do here. We're going to back up. I got over ambunctious on that dovetail. I should have done it. Now, you can't make that dovetail too deep because it's if you make it too deep, it'll go below where your where your jaws are. That was perfect. All right, let's try it again. So what I'm going to do is take this down to about an inch and this is going to be the halo up here. So you can either put, do the halo as this point or you can um, put one on afterwards other, some other kind of way.
I'm going to back this off, and then I'm going to work on the halo a little bit. <coughs> I like to um, make a little indentation here so that you know the halo is sort of separate from her head. Make it a little round. And I like to get back in here just a little bit. Okay, you're all going, so what? So what? It's just spindle turning, right? Well, that's the easy part. Now we're going to make the wings. Questions at this point? This is good for um, ash and maple are pretty good for this and poplar. He used ash in the article, so I decided I would use as much ash as I can. And so then also you've got that good bottom there so it'll stand up when you go. So we're going to see uh, about that. So now we're going to do the wing. And the wing took me a little while to figure out what the best way to do that with. And in order to, you have to go to my little box of tricks. Okay? So, what we need to do, you know, we start out with a blank like this. You know, and it says there what size the holes are. The size, the holes aren't that important in terms of them being the exact what I did. I think the, uh, the direction said three quarters, one and an eighth. I didn't, uh, I went down to John's and uh, we did uh, that and then I got uh, my drill press. Uh, and so mine are mostly three quarters by one or it could be bigger, whatever you want to do on that. It's just one has to be bigger than the other. And you have to put those in from the edge. So, and it's also good, you can see, you need to draw a line through the center of your thing and then measure in from that line as to where to put them, and then halfway through that line, put a dot. Because you're going to have to put, drill a little hole there. So we're going to drill a hole in here to put it on a screw How many of you use screw chucks? All right. So I'm going to pass this around. This is one that I made. Some of them, they come with, big ones come uh, with your lathe. But one of the things you can do is, if it's too long for something like this, is to put a little spacer on it and uh, do that. So if you're interested in that, and again, that should have a dovetail on it, but uh, that one doesn't. So anyways, so what I'm going to do is mount this on a screw chip. Voila! <laughs> okay, and again, going back to our dovetail jaws, we're going to start doing it. Now, this is just like doing doing a uh, a bowl. Does the, do the holes make you nervous? Don't worry about it. Turn that thing as fast as you can and it'll be all right. <laughs> but saying that, I still put my helmet on. Okay, so we have it mounted on a screw chuck. And we're going to make the outside of the bowl, the outside of the wings. 
Remember, you're, you're an artist when you do this, so the shape of the wings is up to you. And who knows what an angel's wings look like. Now, here's, here's where a real trick comes in. I need to leave a flat spot right here. Can you see that on the, on the bottom side of this? Because we're going to have to glue that to a waste block. So it's got to be flat. So you know, you take your, your tool and look, oh, not even close. Uh, so we're going to work on that for just a minute. And I want to leave a little dimple there so that I know where the center is. Because down the road, I'm going to drill a hole in that and put a, uh, a plug. Okay? Now, so what I've done here is I've sort of defined a little flat area. Because one of the problems I've had is gluing this thing straight on, getting it straight onto the waste block. So sometimes it'll be tilted, and if it's tilted, it's it's fine. So can they see that? Okay. So that's a flat spot, and that's where we're going to glue our waste block. Questions. So, now I'm going to get a little CA glue or I'm going to use white glue uh, with uh, paper um, and uh, I'm going to glue, uh, glue the, uh, this to my waste block. I actually did, did two of them. I thought I'd just pass this one around so you can see. This one is glued. You know how you glue with that? You put one piece of paper on one side, another piece of paper on the other side, and, uh, you know, newspaper, and then put your glue in there, uh, and it's easier to take, take apart. So, we magically now have our uh, bowl attached to a waste block. The waste blocks should be maple or poplar. They need to be good solid pieces. Now you notice I put one on this. That's because I use this waste block over and over again. And the way that I got this waste block did, I, I had it, it would start out, you know, like this. And I turned this down so that it would be the same diameter as that circle I put on the bottom. Okay? You know, your jaws aren't all the same on your... Uh, there's variations, see, no matter how good you are. So I, I mark that number one, so I know that that goes with the number one jaw, because I'm going to use this over and over again until it gets too small. Now, we're just going to make another bowl. 
remember we still have the hole there, the screw chuck hole, and uh, you see that? Still have the screw hop chuck hole there. So now we're going to go in and make ourselves the inside of a bolt. <coughs> They're all going, we've all done this before. What's it getting the big bucks for here? Big bucks that are down the road. Okay, so again, we're going to crank it up. If you look closely, you notice that this isn't on straight. You've got a, it's got a little wobble. Don't worry about that because it, it's not going to hurt it when it uh, when you put it on the uh, when you finish up to put it on the thing, or you can sand it sand out a little bit. How many remember, a number of years ago I did, how to, or last year, how to do a thin walled bowl. And that's what we're doing here again, is making a thin walled bowl. So we're going to start with the edge and make it as thin as we can, leave it, and then move on in farther. So uh, it's all just it is, a thin walled bowl. Now the aesthetics part of this, to make it look real, this needs to be as thin as it can be right here at the edge. We don't care if it's real thin down inside of it, but it's the edge is what needs to be, needs to be thin. Now we want to take this down and so and leave enough so that we can put a plug in it. So we're not going to take this all the way to the bottom. We're going to probably leave about this much in the bottom so that we do our plug. Now this is a little different than the way he did it, but uh, if you're doing a bunch of them, You can tell by looking through your hole here how thick, you, how much space you have left. And so we've got a nice cup, cup there. Uh, I could take that down a little bit. I'm probably going to take it down just a hair more, just to uh, push the envelope a little bit. Now, here's the difference between the way Nick Cook did it and the way that I've wind up doing it. Nick Cook wants you to go into this and put a tenon on the bottom of it. Okay? Like that. I had a whole lot of trouble getting that to be uh, a three-eighths or a quarter and sometimes it would break off and I would have to go do anything anyways. It takes a lot of fussing around to get that in there. So what I'm recommending, and it's in the notes later on, is that you just turn this off and uh, we're going to put a plug in that and we're going to put a plug in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the face. But anyways, if you want to try that, use your parting tool to get it, take it into the, the edge there and uh, <coughs> And uh, whatever. So if you're going to make a lot of them. I think the best thing to do is to cut this, cut this down. Now what we would do here 
is with our parting tool. Well, I hardly ever part that off. I saw it off. Because often you get an ugly, you get an ugly uh, break, break there. So I'm going to put it in the magic box here and uh, just saw, saw it off. <sighs> Pardon? That's one of those little very fine, you know. I wonder where it is. Anyways, so what we wind up with then, well, is a nice thing like that. Then what I do is I take this and drill a hole. Up. Well, I have some dowels and I have a 3 8 inch dowel and I make cut a little piece about this long. And I go in here and lay it on a bunch of towels so that it doesn't roll around. If you look in the thing there, I put it on a bag of diatomaceous uh, earth uh, just to show Joe that I'm big into this sort of stuff. So anyways, so we want to draw that hole at a bit of an angle. Okay? And I use spur bits for that so it doesn't uh, do that. So we need to sort of then look and see where that would go and we put it, drilled it right in there like that and then we've already drilled a hole, a similar hole in, in the back of the uh, thing and we're going to insert just a little thing like that, put a little CA glue on it and, uh, good, and uh, look! Ta-da! Ta Huh? That one must have come off more than once. He's also short. Yeah. <laughs> Chased that one around the shop a few times, did you? No, I, I, I made him different sizes. If you haven't, if you haven't felt and touched it, now you got a question. They're hollowed out, though. Okay, I w well, let me see. Some are and some aren't. Some are, if you want it to be a ornament for a tree, hollow it out mm -hmm. like that. So this one we could put a little, mm. hollow, it, hollow it out, uh, and that makes it lighter so that it doesn't just bend the, bend the, uh, the tree down, pass it around. Oh, well, you want a Charlie Brown Christmas. Unhollowed. Oh, yeah. So this is this is the one you know where we've got the uh, the recess in it, so it'll sit uh, pretty uh, solid no matter no matter what. There, pass that straight over your head. Feel it, touch it, say so you want to do it. What do I do? Two twenty. That finish is, uh, is paint. The finish on that one is lacquer, spray lacquer. I finally bought a little tent uh, that I spray in my shop so I don't have it going anywhere. And I have a little Lazy Susan about this big around. And I just spin that and psh, spin it. I have a question for you. Some of these you had cut straight out. Somewhere I saw it. These is round. But you got some out of it. The one you just did, you left that on there yet. Yeah. The, uh, the, uh, if you look at the, the, the question was, what did I, how do, what about the shape of the, uh, of the end of the uh, wings? 
what you do is put that on the bandsaw like it says in the in the thing and cut it out. Now he's, his question is some of these are rounded and some of them are square. I got to tell you some it depends on what I could cut you know where it was and what I was trying to do. This one you know you're artist you get to do whatever you want to do. See this one's this one's straight down and this one's like that. These are painted because that's the way I wanted them and because the uh, the ash that I got uh, for the wings uh, had a lot of um, bugs in it and uh, so there were holes and stuff that I had to had to patch but I sort of like like that it's a nice display and I'll be selling this at a uh, charity event uh, supporting uh, one of our ch charities in town uh, come uh, uh, in a week or two. Questions? I tell you, the hardest part for me was how to figure out how, what he was doing with that um, nub. And if you look on the front of the thing there, I said that nub has <laughs> drove me to the brink to try to figure out what to do. I can, I've done some of them like that, uh, but I figured it's just faster to put the uh, put the little doll in the end of it. Yeah, I'd agree with you. <laughs> just fussing around. Okay. <coughs> drilling that hole, just remember when you're drilling that hole uh, to put it on the uh, screw check, you're drilling that hole that matches the shank, not the outside of the, not the screw threads. We've all made, I've made that mistake before because then it doesn't fit. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.